Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Emergency Management Associates. Coming to you, or coming to you from the Area Command, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We want to welcome everybody who's joined us here on this program today. We welcome you with open hearts. Folks, as we've been doing for quite some time before we had computer problems, we started this program off with a salute to the United States of America, and that's where we're going to start tonight. I would ask now that everyone please rise to their feet. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now would you make welcome, straight from Washington, D.C., the United States Army Corps Quartet. Yeah. right there. The United States Army Barbershop Quartet performing at the Barbershop Quartet Convention in 2015. We appreciate these men and women in the, our armed forces. We give them salute every day. We let them know how much we appreciate them. God bless our men and women in the armed forces. We love and appreciate them. We support them. We give them all that we have to help us become a better nation and a better people. Folks, we have a lot to talk about, again, okay? We have a ton of things to talk about. Now, folks, some of the things I want to talk about are very precious, okay? Someone tried to put out a memo Someone tried to put out a memo earlier today on our politics group over on Facebook. We have a politics group over on Messenger. And somebody tried to say that General Flynn did not support President Trump. They even said 
that the reason the National Guard troops were not called in earlier to protect the Capitol on January 6th was because General Flynn said it would be bad optics. Like I've said before, this was a statement made by Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi made that statement. Now, why am I saying it now? Because I want to make one point perfectly clear. President Trump supports his country. President Trump would have ordered the National Guard troops in there, but Nancy Pelosi said no. Anybody that knows what I know and has read what I have, and I have also spoken to the former chief of the Capitol Police. The former chief of the Capitol Police said that he wanted and asked for permission to call in the National Guard troops. He had to ask permission. He contacted the Sergeant at Arms of the Senate because Nancy Pelosi was the one that gave the yay or nay when it came to the National Guard troops as a result of the police officers being handed their butts to by the protesters over there at the Capitol. The police chief wanted them. You can go over to Tucker Carlson's interview with the chief of the Capitol Police Department. You can hear what he said. That statement that was made over on our politics group was not attributable to General Flynn. But that statement was attributable to Nancy Pelosi, the Democrat leader of the Senate. She had the yay or nay on that. Now, I'm getting damn tired of people putting down our President of the United States, President Trump. Yes, General Flynn was fired by the President. But General Flynn had no say-so whether or not they were going to allow National Guard troops to be on the Capitol on January 6th. President Trump had, in fact, asked that National Guard troops be there. But Nancy Pelosi said no. And when the Capitol Police Chief asked for the National Guard troops, she said no again. Because of optics. How would it look to have National Guard troops at the Capitol to prevent rioters from storming the Capitol? And that's another thing. The rioters did not storm into the Capitol. If you watch Tucker Carlson's interviews and saw his program, they strolled through there. The people that were at the Capitol that day strolled through there. There was no rioting, there was no destruction of public property, and no destruction of national property at the Capitol. Two people broke a window to gain access to the Capitol. Two people. One of them gained access. The other was a girl from San Diego. She was shot and killed by a Capitol Police officer. She was also unarmed. She was unarmed. The Capitol Police did not have probable cause to end her life. The Capitol Police officer did not have probable cause to end her life. She was not armed. He did not see a firearm. Yet he shot and killed her. Okay? I'm just making a statement. I happen to know what I'm talking about. So anybody that tries to say General Flynn had the yay or nay on that, he did not. President Trump had this yay or nay on it, and he was put down by Nancy Pelosi, who controlled the purse strings or purse strings to the National Guard troops. The National Guard troops, by the way, were sitting just off from the Capitol. They could have come in. Baltimore, Maryland police were also there, but they could not come in either. 
Nancy Pelosi would not allow it. She would not allow it. If anybody should go after anyone, they should go after Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi should be arrested and thrown in prison for treason, along with the president administration, including Barack Obama, the puppeteer that is controlling Joe Biden. Okay? I know that to be a fact. When you want to talk about the deep state, talk about Joe Biden. Talk about Nancy Pelosi. Talk about Barack Obama and Biden's entire administration. They're, they are the puppet masters. They are the ones in control. The other people in control are over in Davos, Switzerland, including George Soros. Oh, oh, by the way, did everybody know that George Soros is now in the hospital? As well as Mr. German himself? Because they're very sick. Or they're allegedly sick. Klaus Schwab allegedly sick in the hospital. Do I believe that? No. No. Those two gentlemen are probably in a deep underground military base being protected. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. Now, I didn't expect to be talking about January 6th tonight. But I am damn tired of the false narrative going out. I want everybody to know. I would love everyone to spread the truth of this matter all over the world. Please share this program tonight with everybody that you know. Last night, because we used our phone to broadcast our program, we had 2,700 people, over 2,700 people that saw our program. Because we're using our computer and YouTube has more control over it, guess what? I will bet you that out front, after we finish this program tonight, we might have three or 400. The other night when we used our computer, we had zero people uh, that were shown from the outside that viewed our program. I went into the interior analytics and YouTube said there were 437 people. And by the next day, we had over a thousand people that had seen that program. Let's share this program far and wide. Let's not let YouTube control this program. We are all better than that. This program is better than anything you could, YouTube could even put on. I don't trust YouTube any further than I can throw them. Literally. In every aspect of that word. I don't trust them. They are part of the worldwide control of everything. They have been told by the Biden administration to control the rhetoric here on YouTube, to not let any of the truth go, come out. So it wouldn't surprise me that they'll take down this program before the end of the night. They've done it before, and they'll do it again. Now, I have some things I need to talk to you about. Yesterday I tried to show you some sunspots. We have some sunspots here on this particular satellite photography of the sun. Notice the sunspots that are earth facing. There are three of them. One in the upper center of the sun and one in the lower center of the sun. Three earth facing sunspots. Well guess what? Guess what? Those sunspots have flared. Look at this. 
if after this program is over, please go over and look at Wages World. Look at Wages World here on YouTube. Mark Wages will explain what happened the other day to the sun. In particular, those sunspots I just showed you. But you can see the sun flaring. These sunspots are hitting the earth right now as we speak. These solar flares that you're seeing, the CMEs, the coronal mass ejections, the plasma radiation from the sun is hitting us right now as we speak. Radio communication blackouts. And it's going to continue for some time now. Usually after the solar flares hit the earth, the flare action or the resultant flare action continues to affect communications here on this earth for two to three days after it happens. It also creates, these solar flares also create the glows in the sky that you see at upper altitudes. Okay? That happens. You see the aurora borealis in the sky when these solar flares, the plasma radiation hits the earth. Now, as I spoke of before, and I spoke of before many times, the plasma radiation that reaches the earth affects radio communications on the outset as it enters the atmosphere. But the solar flares, the plasma radiation, hits the surface of the earth. It goes all the way down into the core of the earth. What happens? The plasma radiation heats up the surface of the earth. It heats up the tectonic plates. We've shown you this many times before. It heats up the, the tectonic plates. And all the gunk and the grime, the biological material, the sand and the dirt, heat up. And they were presently, before the solar flares happened, holding the plates in place. When that gunk and grime, the biological material, heats up, it becomes more of a greasy, oily substance, allowing the tectonic plates to more freely move like this. That's what happens. I've shown you this many times in the past, and I will continue to show it because we have new people here that are watching this program. We need to understand what's going on. The solar flares, the coronal mass ejections cause earthquakes. And I'm going to show you a lot of earthquakes that have happened. We've had no major earthquakes so far today. It doesn't mean it won't happen, though. It does not mean it won't happen. Okay? So let's go from here and let's talk about earthquakes that have happened. Okay? First off. I want to go over here to the USGS map. Right before we came on the air today, we had an earthquake hit over in the Cascadia subduction area, right off the coast of Vancouver Island, right here. Right off the northwest coast of Vancouver Island. Folks, this earthquake was at least a 5.0. USGS immediately downgraded to a 4.9. Now, I have not had the opportunity to go into the BIOS of this earthquake. USGS has a seismologist study page that after the earthquakes hit, I go and take a look at what happened. Many times, they don't even allow it. They hide the data. It's happened many times. Sometimes they say the earthquakes are a lot less than they are. And in fact, when we go to the back seismologist study page and take a look at what it says, sometimes even the data for a 4.9, 5.0 is obscured. They don't let us see the details of the seismo seismographs that are on the ocean floor 
and over on Vancouver Island in this case, recording what happened. But there are seismographs around here, around this same area, where they record larger earthquakes. And there's data for those. Meaning this 4.95.0 may have been even larger than they are saying it is. Okay? I will have that information tomorrow. But this is the latest earthquake that has happened today. But it's not the only earthquake I want to talk about. Okay? Let's go down here to the southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone. This is another earthquake here. Okay? Look at this. Down here on the Gorda Escarpment, just west of the Cascadia subduction zone and the San Andreas Fault here in Northern California, just west of the Triple Junction area here, we have a 3.0 earthquake. A small 3.0 earthquake. Small earthquakes range in size from 3.0 to 3.9. This originally came out as a 2.9. They have, they have actually upgraded to a 3.0. There are other earthquakes here as well, but they have deleted those, as you can see. They're only showing this 3.0, and this may not last the rest of the night. That's why I'm showing it to you now. Now. I've got a lot more earthquakes I want to show you. I'm going to show you seismograms. I'm going to show you tonight a lot of seismograms from Southern California because they, the agencies, don't want you to know what's going on. Heaven forbid they tell us the truth. Last night after we got off the air, we had an earthquake up here in the Aleutian Islands area. A 4.3 mod earthquake here. I told you last night that there had been an earthquake off the central part of the Kamchatka Peninsula over here in Russia on the western portion of the Aleutian Island Fault Zone just off the coast of Kamchatka Peninsula. What was that? What was that? A 5.0 earthquake. Guess what this is? This is a 4.3 here, over here, near Nikolsky, Alaska. The westernmost portion of the peninsula of Alaska. A 4.3 earthquake. Yes, there is a tiny, tiny earthquake over here, near Atka, Alaska here. This is a 0 0.9 microquake over here, not at Alaska, but I'm sorry, ADAC Alaska. ADAC Alaska. Just a tiny microquake. But we still have large seismic energy moving its way through the Aleutian Islands. We are still going to see what happens here in the very near future, even during this week. Because we have a whole heck of a lot of seismic energy hold up here in the Gulf of Alaska. 7.0s, 6.0s, 5.0s, 5.5s, 5.9s that have happened over here off the of Kamchatka Peninsula. That energy is over here in the Gulf of Alaska, and it's just waiting to go off. At some point, when there is so much energy hold up here, it's going to pop. And it's already making its way down here into the Cascadia subduction zone, just off the coast of northwestern Vancouver Island. Now, I want to go just briefly back to Vancouver Island here. Where do you see this earthquake here? This 5.0 here, just off the coast of Vancouver Island. Back in 2020, 
2020. Christmas Eve 2020. December 24th, 2020. What happened? There were three 7.0 earthquakes that hit here. Three 7.0 earthquakes that hit here December 24th, 2020. Christmas Eve. We thought that it was going to explode that night. We thought those three 7.0 major earthquakes that hit here on Christmas Eve would set off the Cascadia subduction zone, the Cascadia mega thrust earthquake. We prayed like we have never prayed before and asked the Lord to bless this area, to make sure this area was not destroyed on Christmas Eve that night. So far that has not happened. But we are already over 35 years past due for a Cascadia mega thrust earthquake here that's going to set off a 9.0, 10.0 earthquake hitting in this area. It's probably going to hit further south here just off the coast of Seattle Tacoma area over here on the Cascadia subduction zone or further west over here on the Juan de Fuca fault area or in between those. That is where we expect the Cascadia mega thrust earthquake to happen. Now, I want to make sure that you completely understand what I am saying. This is important. We are going to still see a very major earthquake to hit here. We've talked about it in the past and we're going to talk about it more. It's going to hit here. It is. But this 5.0 off the northwest coast of Vancouver Island is just one more earthquake here. One more piece of seismic energy here that is holding off in this area. We still have three of those 7.7 or 7.0 earthquakes sitting here. The energy is locked up just here, just like it is in the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to let loose. When? We don't know, but it's going to happen. I want to make sure you're aware of this. It's important. Now I see we're being buffered again. I'm sorry about that. My dear friend Don Patok is here in the chat. He's one of our mods here. He says, Ron doesn't have a crystal ball. It doesn't work. The only thing I have when it comes close to crystal ball is this bottle of water. But this bottle of water doesn't tell me anything. The only thing I can see with this bottle of water is when the water is moving inside it, and that tells me we're having a tremor here. Yes, we've already had tremors here in Morgan to North Carolina, many of them. The ground is still shaking here. Now you may see the water moving inside the bottle right now, that's me. It is not the tremors here. Okay? You need to know that. Not necessarily that I'm making the water go, but there are tremors here in North Carolina. Now, someone else here on the YouTube frequencies, the YouTube channels here, on April 7th said that we're going to have a major earthquake here in North Carolina. Guess what? He has no clue what he's talking about. That man has no clue what he's talking about. This is a man I used to trust. A man I used to trust. 
He's off behind the eight ball. He is off behind the eight ball. He has no clue what he's saying anymore. Now, I can truthfully say that he has been taking drugs. He may have been taking drugs for a long time. I have got statements from him right now saying that he is going to try not to be taking drugs anymore. He's going to get rid of what he has. But, something else. He says he's going to get rid of all of his seed. So apparently he's also been growing it. Now, I don't trust him. Not at all. Do not trust the D-man. Do not trust the D-man. I used to trust him. I trusted him a lot. He let us down. He has let everyone down around the world. When I first caught up with him a lot of years ago, he had like 30,000 subscribers. I had 200. Later that 200 became 2,000. That 2,000 became 25,000 and then YouTube took me down. I started this channel. I had again 200, 250, 1,000, 2,000. Then all of a sudden my numbers rose. Now I have over 4,100 plus. I hope all of you will subscribe to this channel so we can make this channel grow as well. Mr. D, on the other hand, went to a company and paid that company a lot of money to give him subscribers. How do I know that? Guess what? Overnight, his 30,000 subscribers made 100,000 subscribers. Then 200,000 and 300,000, and now he has over 660,000 subscribers. He paid for them. Now, you're not supposed to do that here. I have never done that here on my channel. I do not buy subscribers. I earn people's trust. That's why in the last year that I now have over 4,000 subscribers, I have earned people's trust. I don't lie. I don't cheat and I don't steal. And I don't hold fundraisers to buy drugs. Did you know that he has held multiple fundraisers for anywhere from 3,000 to 8,000 to 20,000 and even to try to earn $1 million. He held a fundraiser just a few years ago to earn $1 million. He didn't get a dime from it. He did not get a dime from it. I have proof of it. I have screenshots from his programs. That's what kind of person that man is. I have a whole lot of other damning information from him written by his own hand. I wouldn't trust him at all. It's sad. Surely is here in the chat saying, so sad, but explain some things. Yeah, it does. The only reason I am even talking about it now, I have other things I want to show you, but the only reason I'm talking about it now is because he posted some things today. We got screenshots of it. Then he took those screenshots down because those things incriminated him. So he cut off his own hand to spite his face. 
sad. Sad. Anyway, guys, I have a lot more things to talk about than that. I have nothing good to say about him at all. Nothing. I went from respecting him 11 years ago to not trusting him now. Five years ago, he made a lot of promises to people, you and me included. But he broke those promises. He told us that he was no longer going to be on the air to talk about earthquakes or earthquake forecasting. At that point in time, I made a decision five years ago that someone had to come on the air and talk about it. I spoke to my wife. I spoke to some of my friends and even Don Patoka, who's one of my dearest friends, who is a mod on this program. They all encouraged me to come here. And I've been here now for five years. I will continue that. Heidi Petrick just gave us a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Heidi. We dearly, dearly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I don't hold fundraisers here. Yes, I could have done so to try to get things that I need. And yes, I told you guys and I showed you that I needed a new computer and you guys helped me get that. I still have to fine tune this computer some apparently because my mug is frozen on the picture here. It shouldn't be frozen at all. YouTube has something to do about that. But folks, I'm going to do some fine tuning here. One of my friends here locally here in Morganton, he has a computer business called the Cerner Computers. Rich is a very good man. I may have spoken about him in the last year or so. He has helped me to fine tune this computer. This is a very fast computer now. That's why I'm saying we should not have any kind of buffering going on. It's not me. This computer is new. And I have done things to this computer to stop the buffering and make it a very high-speed computer. I put in a very high-speed drive, a solid-state high-speed drive in here, like a 7-terabyte drive. We should not have any buffering at all, but you can see it's happening. So it's not me. Anyway, guys, there's even more than this I'm going to talk about. I'm going to leave this now and talk about earthquakes all around the globe. And then I'm going to talk about earthquakes in Southern California. Okay? Stand by, guys. We have a lot to talk about tonight. Anyway, let's go over here to the southwestern part of the Pacific. Okay? There's a lot to talk about here. Over in southern Japan, the D-man called this a major earthquake. He has no clue what he's talking about. This was a 6.3 earthquake. A 6.3 earthquake here in southern Japan. Look where it's at. Look where it's at. It's just barely off the coast of Uwa Jima, Japan. U-W-A-J-I-M-A, -A Japan. Uwa Jima, Japan. A 6.3 very strong earthquake. Now, this is over in the islands over here, just off the coast of Japan. There are going to be a lot of people that felt this quake. A lot. Now, there may be some injuries with this quake as well. 
this earthquake happened this morning. We don't see any aftershocks here, do we? There are going to be aftershocks with this earthquake, regardless whether USGS says there are or not. There are going to be aftershocks with this earthquake. USGS rarely ever tells us the truth, do they? Rarely. Sad. Sad we can't trust our agency here. Rarely do they ever tell us what's going on. I want to show you something. Where this earthquake is, USG is not showing any other quakes here, any other aftershocks. Look at this. 20 plus aftershocks here. 20 plus aftershocks here, guys. This was and is a huge earthquake. And it's very possible we may see larger earthquakes here in the very near future. In the very near future. Now, I want to show you something. This is that 6.3 earthquake right there. Okay. Just north of there is where we're seeing 20 plus earthquakes. Look at this area here, guys. This is an island just off the coast of Japan. 20 plus earthquakes here, and it's a very populated area. Look at the shoreline of this island. This is a very populated island, guys. Now, I'm going to blow this thing up and enlarge it so you can see exactly what's happened here. And it's not letting me show it. No joke. This is the EMSC map, and usually the EMSC map lets me show all the aftershocks, and it's not. It's still showing 20 plus earthquakes there. 20 plus aftershocks, and it's not letting me show that. Wow. That's wild. It's never done that before. That probably means there are more earthquakes than just 20 plus earthquakes there. Aftershocks there. Aftershocks. I want to show you this other place. Just out here to the west and south. Look at this. This is also a very populated area. People felt this quake. People felt this quake. USBS is saying it's 11 miles west-southwest of Uwe Jima, Japan. Right here. Is it talking about this island that it's close to here? Or is Uwe Jima, Japan, up here where all the aftershocks are? Regardless, a lot of people felt this quake. And they're probably trembling right now. Trembling right now. NCWQ Worldwide News Disasters Explorer is saying a 6.2 earthquake just hit. Population, 58,900 people. A 6.2. That means another earthquake hit here. Another earthquake hit here. Fantasy Dog just gave us another $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Fantasy Dog. We appreciate that. Ever so much. God bless you for that. God bless Heidi Petrick for that $10 super chat a few minutes ago. We really appreciate it, Heidi. We really appreciate this fantasy dog. Thank you so much. We need these super chats and other revenue that you give us to keep this program on the air. 
One thing I found is it takes money to keep these programs on the air. And you guys do that. I thank my God for every remembrance of you. I do. I think of that scripture in Philippians every day. Every day when you guys are here with me, I think about that scripture. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. You guys are what keeps this program on the air. Your love, your prayers, your sacrifices to keep us on the air. Thank you ever so much. It will never be ever forgotten. Ever. Now, just north of that earthquake, we have a 3.0 earthquake here. Off to the south of there, we have another 3.0 earthquake here. I know those other 20 plus earthquakes here are larger earthquakes. 4.5s, 4.9s, even 5.5 earthquakes here. Aftershocks of that 6.3. Now that 6.3 did not create a tsunami wave. We have to have above a 6.5, above a 6.5 earthquake. It didn't happen this time. Oh, NCWQ says she was telling someone else where it was earlier. Okay, I'm sorry. There was no other 6.2. I hope it doesn't happen. That could create other problems. But look where this earthquake is located. In the southern island region of Japan. A lot of people felt this quake. South of there, Taiwan is still shaking. Taiwan had had an 8.4 earthquake here a few weeks ago. This is a 5.0 here off the northwest coast, northeast coast of Taiwan. They're still getting hit. A lot of earthquakes. Off the southwest coast of Luzon, Philippines, the northernmost island of the Philippines, we have a 3.2 and a 3.1 earthquake up here near Luzon Island, Philippines. South of there, this one is just northeast of Mindanao, Philippines. This is near General Luna, Philippines. This is a 3.2 earthquake. A 3.2 earthquake just northeast of Mindanao, Philippines. Mindanao, Philippines, folks, is right... Let me get my pointer here so you can see this. Mindanao, Philippines is here. This earthquake here is just off the coast of Mindanao, Philippines. Okay. Again, it's a 3.2. Now, I'm not going to go into all the earthquakes over here in Indonesia. There are a bunch of them. That's only part of them. That's only part of them. Look at all these other earthquakes here. All over Indonesia. USGS shows two. These are threes and fours. 3.0 to 3.9 and 4.0 to 4.9 literally over here in Indonesia. Okay? That's what's happened there. Over here to the west in China, there's another 5.0 here in China. But guess what? It's not the only one. There are also two other 5.0 earthquakes here in China. This is one right here, and there's another one right here. These other two earthquakes are 3.5 earthquakes. These other, th these other three are 5.0 large earthquakes in China. In China. Okay? That's what happened. I want to go briefly to the east, okay? Fiji. 
a 4.3 earthquake in northern Fiji, just south of there. Another 5.4 earthquake over in Fiji. Another 5.4 large earthquake in Fiji today. Folks, that 5.4 earthquake is larger. A 5.4 earthquake there in Fiji, guys. Insane. It literally is. This is not very deep either. It's only 242 miles deep. 242 miles deep. We've seen deep earthquakes before. This is not a deep earthquake. You think 242 miles is deep? No, it's not. It's only medium deep. We've seen earthquakes in this region 600 miles deep. 600 miles deep. 653 kilometers deep. Deep earthquakes. This is only medium deep. That's what I first thought. Oh my gosh, another deep earthquake. It was not. Look over here in New Zealand. Most of the earthquakes here in New Zealand are here around the North Island of New Zealand. Yes, we do have five earthquakes over here on the western side of the South Island, the northwestern side of the South Island. These are 3.4, 3.2, and 3.5 earthquakes over here on the northwestern side of the South Island. All these earthquakes here, guys, are 3.5 and less going all the way down to 2.4. Minor earthquakes and small earthquakes all over the North Island of New Zealand today. No big deal. Yesterday they had a 4.5 moderate earthquake over there in New Zealand. People felt that. People felt that. It didn't do but any moderate damage, meaning Photos falling off the walls. Glass bowls and dishes rattling. Cupboards opening. That's all that happened. No major damage at all, but moderate damage. Moderate damage. Folks, today, over on the southern part of the Antarctic Ridge, near the Bellany Islands, we had another 5.16 earthquake here. A 5.16 earthquake on the Antarctic Ridge here, south of New Zealand. A large earthquake. This is not the first and it won't be the last. We've had numerous large earthquakes hit this region, and in fact, we had a 6.0 here just about three weeks ago. Okay? On the Antarctic Ridge. We've had another earthquake over in South Australia. Southeastern Australia. This is today a moderate earthquake. A 4.1 earthquake in southeastern Australia. The other earthquakes as of late have only been 2.4s and the largest being a 3.1 in central Australia. This is the first 4.5 that's hit here in quite some time. A moderate earthquake hitting Australia today. Okay? Now, briefly, only briefly, I want to go over here and show you earthquakes in South America. There are a bunch. There are 18 earthquakes here in South America, including those down south along the coastline of Chile and Argentina over here, the borderline between Chile and Argentina and the coastline of Chile, and up here in Colombia. Okay? Second, we've had another large earthquake here in Nicaragua today. This was a large 5.5 earthquake. A large 5.5 earthquake hit Nicaragua today. There is damage and there's some people that are injured here in Nicaragua. That's what happens when you have a large earthquake that hits anywhere especially a 5.5. That is a mid-range 5. 
that is a mid-range five. This hit 11 miles east-southeast of Cardenas, Nicaragua. Location Central Turkey, last flight magnitude 4.2, six minutes ago. 4.2 hit again in Turkey, six minutes ago. 4.2 over in the Turkey-Syrian border region where we had that huge 9.0, 10.0 earthquake a year ago, just over a year ago. Okay, This 5.5 I'm talking about here in Nicaragua is only 93, 94 miles deep. 93.8 miles deep here. Nicaragua. Nicaragua. I did not believe it was going to hit there. I thought it was going to hit along the coast, but it hit inland in Nicaragua. Now, off the coast of Nicaragua, we had a 3.4 earthquake there. That's where I actually thought the 5.5 was going to hit. It didn't. Over off the southern part of Mexico. We've had a lot of earthquakes. 30 to 40 earthquakes over here in southern Mexico every day. Look here. I want you to see this. Oh, gee, it moved for whatever reason. Look at that. About 22 earthquakes today. Yesterday it was 38 earthquakes. Today, 22 earthquakes here in southern Mexico. Ranging in size, just ranging in size, guys, from 3.5 to 4.0 earthquake. 3.5 to 4.0 earthquakes here. Southern Mexico. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm sorry, it's 26 earthquakes. 26 earthquakes here in southern Mexico. Now, we continue having earthquakes here in the Gulf of California. 20 plus earthquakes today, 8 earthquakes yesterday, and 4 earthquakes the day before here in the Gulf of California. Does anybody realize what's going on? Does anybody realize what's going on here in the Gulf of California? Gonna have to excuse NCWQ Explorer here. She's going to put her grandbaby to bed. Give her a hug for us too. Please let her know that all of us love her as well. Thank you so much for your service, Rebecca. We appreciate you. Anyway, but does anybody realize what's going on here in the Gulf? We've had all those earthquakes in southern Mexico. What's going on? Those earthquakes are making their way up here. They're making their way up here in the Gulf of California. What is here? What is right there? It's called the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault. And in this case, we have earthquakes coming north from Mexico coming up here into the Gulf. Earthquakes. Earthquakes, guys. 20 plus today. 20 plus today. 4.1s, 3.9s, 4.1s, 4.4 earthquakes. 20 plus earthquakes here on the San Andres Fault, and these earthquakes in this case are coming north from Mexico. What's going to happen? We have had 5.0 earthquakes here. 5.0 earthquakes here. 5.5s, 5.3s. That energy, guys. It's moving up here into California. Northern Mexico and California. Okay? Off the coast of Baja. This is southwest 
of Vicente Guerrero, Baja California. A 3.9 4.0 earthquake right here. Just off the west coast of Baja California. We move north. What do you think we're going to see here? Just south of Sierra Prado Volcano, we have a 1.93 2.0 earthquake right here. 1.93 2.0 earthquake right here. Then across the border into California. California. I'm going to show you earthquakes here today. Today. Earthquakes. What do you expect to see? Brawley, California. In the Brawley Seismic Zone. This is a 2.1 earthquake here in the Brawley Seismic Zone down here in the Imperial Valley of California. Just north of there. Just north of there, this time on the southern side of the Salton Sea here. The southern side of the Salton Sea. What do we have? Calipatria, California. A 1.5 tremor and a 1.47 tremor. Tremors over here in Calipatria. Folks, those are only two earthquakes there in the Imperial Valley. Two. There are over 100 earthquakes there in Calipatria itself, in that area right there. Over 100 earthquakes here. Westmoreland. Westmoreland. Westmoreland's right here. There are probably another 50 tremors and microquakes here in Westmoreland. I have the seismograms to show you. That's not all, folks, but more. A lot more. The town of Imperial right here. A bunch more tremors and minor earthquakes right here. Minor. 2.0, 1.5, 1.7 earthquakes. A bunch. El Centro. We have 3.0s and 3.5 earthquakes here in El Centro, and I'm going to show you those as well. But that's not all, folks. There's more. There's more. Down here in Holtville, this is where the Sultan Sea Desert Research Station is. Guess what? They're not showing anything here. Wait till you see the seismogram down here in Holtville, California today. Probably another 30 or 40 tremors and microquakes and minor earthquakes in Holtville. In the Imperial Valley in Southern California is moving and it's moving greatly. <coughs> it's too darn bad that the USBS doesn't want anybody to know about it. USGS is not showing squat. Less than squat. Unreal. Let me show you some earthquakes, guys. Let me show you some real earthquakes. Let me get out of the USGS map here. Let's go up and show you some earthquakes. Okay? The first one I want to show you is not even in California. And yet I want to show you this. There was an earthquake here in Dell, Arkansas today. This is a seismogram from Dell, Arkansas today, this morning. All you see here are minor tremors here. All you can see here on this seismogram from this morning are minor tremors. But guess what? It's not the only one that's here, guys. 
it's not the only one that's here. Look at this. Yes, there was indeed an earthquake in Dell, Arkansas this afternoon. Over here, just after 12, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just after 12.07 p.m. Here we have a 2.0 earthquake here. 12.07 p.m. What happened just after 1.04 p.m. today? Another one here. This time a 2.2 earthquake here. A 2.2 earthquake. Then look at these other tremors here. But down here, okay, this is at 3.43 this afternoon. This is a 2.8 earthquake. A 2.8 earthquake right here. Just seconds later, what happened? A 2.5 earthquake right here. USGS was trying to tell us there was one, only one earthquake. Only one. There were actually four earthquakes here today. One at 12.07, one at 1.18 p.m. this afternoon, and these two here, 3.43 this afternoon. So again, the agency still doesn't want us to see what's going on. That's why I wanted to show you this. They never want to show us what's actually happening. Now, something else that you need to know. You know where Dell, Arkansas is? It's about 80 miles west of what? The New Madrid Fault Zone, the Mississippi River. West of the Mississippi River, west of the New Madrid Fault. But, again, it was not the only earthquakes that happened here in Arkansas. Today, Manila, Arkansas, this is further west from Dell. North and west from Dell, Arkansas. Look what we have here in Manila, Arkansas. We have microquakes, but we also have a 2.2 earthquake this afternoon. A 2.2 earthquake at 3.43 this afternoon. This time in Manila, Arkansas. I'm not done yet. There's more. <laughs> There's more. How about Mark Tree, Arkansas? Look at this. What does this remind you of? <laughs> what does this remind you of? Bombay Beach over there in the Imperial Valley? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened early this morning here? What do you think happened early this morning here just after midnight? First off, 2.8, 2.9 earthquakes. Then about two minutes later, all of a sudden that seismic energy increased to 3.5, 4.0 earthquakes here in Mark Tree, Arkansas. We can't tell exactly what happened here in Mark Tree, Arkansas just after midnight this morning because the top was cut off by the seismogram itself. The bottom was also cut off. We can't see totally the bottom of this, this quake sequence. At least a 3.5 earthquake here. It continued. How long does this earthquake sequence continue? From the first time it became an earthquake, maybe at a 2.8 earthquake, guess what? Three and a half minutes here. 
a three and a half minute earthquake here. It didn't stop for three and a half minutes. It shook and shook some more. Then what happened at about 1 13 this afternoon? 2.5, 3.0 earthquakes. This time it shows it. This time we can see the seismogram moving here. 2.5 and then 3.0 earthquakes here and over to the right. What is that? That is a secondary wave. The secondary wave lasts another minute and a half. Look what happened again after 3 p.m. this afternoon. Approximately 3.07 this afternoon, we had a bunch of tremors this time and 2.0 earthquakes. The tremor sequence, including the earthquakes, lasted another three minutes. This time, the secondary wave lasted two minutes after that. The secondary wave. Then, one, two, three, four, five, fifteen this afternoon on the red line here. The tremors began just at, or just actually before, 515 this morning. These earthquakes are this morning. The tremors began just before 515. They, the tremors continued for minutes, about five minutes, six minutes, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 tremors. It built up and continued to build up until it reached a sequence where it began to be 2.0 and then 3.0 earthquakes and tremors after that. Then down at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8.30 this morning. 8.33 this morning we had another seismic sequence here. 3.0 earthquakes. It didn't last very long, but 3.0 earthquakes. At least four of them. Back to back to back. Prior to that, over here on the right on this red line. This is, let's see, 11, 10, 9. So this would be 8, 44 this morning. 8, 44 this morning, we have another 2.8, 3.0 earthquake over here. On that blue line, another 3.0 sequence there. Over here on this green line, 8, 45 on the left-hand side. So this is about 8.55 this morning. More 3.0 earthquakes here. This is just west of the New Madrid Fall Guys. Just west of the New Madrid at Mark Tree, Arkansas. This is where we see a lot of this kind of earthquakes here. Mark Tree, Arkansas. And guess what? It continued this afternoon. Look at that. Started off about 120, I'm going to say 127, 128 uh, this afternoon. And then it literally continued for the next three hours. 3.0 earthquakes all over here. Now we have not reported on the new Madden fault since last week, but I wanted to show you this. The pneumatic fault is moving. The pneumatic fault is moving and it's going to continue to move in a great way. Richard Smith says the pneumatic fault is sinking. I don't want to swim. <laughs> Just wait to see what happens. The last pneumatic earthquake caused a huge lake to form. It's going to pop again. Probably within the next two years. With earthquakes like this happening, 
It's happening all over. This is just an example of earthquakes here on the pneumatic fault. Let's go over and take a look at California. Wait till you see Bakersfield. Look at this in Bakersfield. The San Andreas Fault here in Bakersfield. Look at this. This morning, guys, look at that. Tremors and even 3.0 earthquake. And this, this, the start of this seismic sequence here began at 5 a.m. on the seismograph. Okay? What happened just after 12.10 this afternoon? Okay? The black line down here on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. I want to make sure I get it right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes after noon. Wasn't even seven. Wasn't even twelve ten. Twelve ten. It was twelve oh seven. Two point eight. Two point nine earthquakes here. Bakersfield. Bakersfield, California. Usually, all we see here is tremors, not today. Minor earthquakes here in Bakersfield, California. It's not over, guys. It's not over till the fat lady sings, and I don't know any fat ladies. Barstow, California. Look at this. This is nothing. Microquakes here. Microquakes and minor tremors. 1.0, 1.1 tremors. That's it. Barstow, California. I've been there. Now, when we looked at the USGS map here in Southern California, over along the San Andreas Fault, there is a small town called Cabazon. Look at Cabazon. USBS is only saying there's a 0 0.9 microquake hitting here. This does not look like a 0 0.9 microquake. These are tremors. These are long duration tremors here at Cabazon, California. Not just a 0 0.9 microquake. Granted, granted, there are probably at least one 0 0.9 microquake. At least. But look at the tremors here. The San Andreas Fault is vibrating here in the Cava Zone area. This is what they call the Anza Gap. The northern part of the Anza Borrego Desert State Park. The Anza Gap. It's moving. It's moving in a big way. That's Cava Zone. Now, I want to go off the coast of Los Angeles, over to the, China, the Channel Islands. Look at this. Folks, did you know you were going to see this morning, at 5.03 this morning, that you were going to see a 2.0, 2.2 earthquake. 5.03 this morning. How about after 7 a.m.? You see 7 a.m. over here on the left? Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 7 8 this morning. A 3.0 earthquake in the Channel Islands just west of Los Angeles. See that big black earthquake here? A 3.3, 3.5 earthquake here. 3.3, 3.5 earthquake here. Then tremors and minor 2.0 earthquakes off and on this afternoon. 
okay? That's what's going on here in the Channel Islands just off the coast of LA. There's more to come. A lot more. <laughs> Chino. Let's go northeast to Chino, north of LA. Look at this. This is typical of Chino. These are minor tremors for the most part. Minor tremors and an occasionally occasional 2.0 minor earthquake. Constant minor tremors and an occasional 2.0 earthquake. Minor earthquake. Chino, California. It's still busy. Still busy. It's getting busier here in Chino. I have a dear friend that I met when I lived in San Diego. He was a Marine at Camp Pendleton. He lives here in Chino. I care about him and his family. They're very dear to me. We are going to see larger earthquakes in Chino. The pressure is building over in Chino. Let's go over to northern Los Angeles for a minute. The town of Del Amo, California. Look at this. This is not even funny. Constant tremor earthquakes. Constant tremor earthquakes. Look at this. All day long. Folks, this is getting worse. Del Amo didn't used to look like this. These are the most tremors and minor earthquakes that I've seen. Yes, I believe there are some 2.0 earthquakes here as well. But having this seismic or seismogram here, top to bottom, left to right, full with seismic activity. It's not even occasional here. This is constant, continuous movement here. In the Los Angeles area. Del Amo, California. Now, this past weekend, we saw a lot of tremors and earthquakes hitting over in the Ridgecrest area. And north of the Ridgecrest area at the coast of Volcano the Coast of Volcano. There were 32 earthquakes and tremors around the Coast of Volcano. Last night, several people asked me what's going on. It's just not earthquakes. Why do you think the Coast of Volcano is moving? Why do you think the Coast of Volcano is moving? Because there is moving magma down beneath the surface. Moving magma down beneath the surface. Let's go back to the USGS map here. I want to show you what's going on because it's continuing today. It's moving as we speak. Let's leave Japan here and go over to California. Look at all those earthquakes here in California. It's wild. It's wild, guys. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving in a big way. It's moving in a big way. The USGS map is not even doing this any real duty here. I want to show these tremors over here in a volcanic area. This is Wolford Heights, California, a 0 0.9 microquake here. This is a volcanic area. This is northwest of the Garlock Fault. 
This is also 0 0.9 microquake here. Down here at the bottom or the southern west end of the Garlock Fault, this is Fraser, California right here. Fraser, California. Fraser Park. This is a 1.4 tremor here. We go north. USBS is not showing any earthquakes whatsoever here in Ridgecrest. There are earthquakes here in Ridgecrest. There are earthquakes here in Ridgecrest. Let's go back to my device here. Let's see if we can show you some earthquakes and tremors over in Ridgecrest, California. There's plenty of seismic signals here. Plenty of them. Plenty of them. Actually, USBS and the MSC is not showing any earthquakes whatsoever here. They're not showing any earthquakes whatsoever here in Ridgecrest. They are, there are earthquakes here. Yesterday it was going all crazy here. Ridgecrest, Trona, California, Cyril's Valley, there were plenty of earthquakes here. Now, north of there, north of there, again, we're talking about Kozo Junction, Kozo Volcano. Today we're not showing as many earthquakes here, but I want to show you this. There's two, four, six, eight earthquakes here. Yesterday there were 30 of them. There were 30 earthquakes. Some of those were 3.1, 3.5, 3.7 earthquakes. This is a volcanic field. This is a volcanic field here. Okay? 0 0.75, 0 0.95, 1.8. Eight tremor there. One point eight tremor there. Continuing here. One point one two zero point seven one one point seven four zero point six seven and this is a zero point five six microquake here. Like I said, yes, there were microquakes here yesterday. Yesterday, there were tremors here, but there were also minor earthquakes and small earthquakes. 3.5, 3.75 earthquakes here in the Kozo Volcanic Field. This is a volcanic field, ladies and gentlemen. This is a huge, expansive volcanic field over here in Southern California. It's huge huge. There is a geothermal plant here as well. What is a geothermal plant doing? Men have drilled into the upper magma chamber of the Kozo volcanic field to obtain steam to power turbines here to generate electricity here in the Kozo volcanic field. It's another brainchild of Harry Reid the former senator from California here. Actually, not from California, former senator of Nevada. The former senator of Nevada. Now, I'm looking on my device here. There are plenty of craters here. I want to show you that first. Look at all these craters here. All over the landscape, literally. I'm trying to locate some of the... Um, turbines here in this facility because it's huge. It's, it's expansive. It's expansive here. Ah, oh, gosh. This is frustrating because I've, I've shown you some of the turbines here in this facility because it's literally everywhere. And now, because I'm actually looking for it, I can't find it. Highway 395 here runs from San Diego County just on the southwestern side 
of the Kozo Volcanic Field. There is a gas station and a small hotel here and a trinket shop. And I still can't believe I can't find the turbine facility here. That's weird. That is really sad. I've been through here so, so many times. I don't think you can possibly imagine the many times I've been through this Mojave Desert. And it's miserable. One of the names they have given the Kozo Volcanic Field is Devil's Kitchen. It is hotter than blazes. In the summertime, I was there at the gas station trying to get gas, and the gas station attendant told me it was 125 degrees in the shade. 125 degrees in the shade. That is pretty darn hot. Pretty darn hot. That's just weird. I thought I could find that for you. It might be fun to look at some of the uh, features of the Mojave Desert there and to show you some of the turbines at the Kozo Volcanic Field. And now I can't find them. That is just so weird. I want to show you this because I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it or not, but I want to see if we can show you this. See that line there? That is Highway 395 running from San Diego all the way into Northern California. 395 goes right next to the west side of the Coza Volcanic Field. And I would have thought that we could have seen Well golly gee, well golly Shazam, Dr. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Sergeant Carter, Sergeant Carter. <laughs> I found the gas station and I also found the hotel right there. The gas station hotel right there at the Coza Volcanic Field, right off of Highway 395 there in California. Now let's go over here to the east and see if we can find some of the um, some of the. Um, some of the turbines in this facility. That's just weird. I thought for sure because I've been through this area so many times and I found it for you guys in the past. Those of you that are not new to this program who are old time, old supposed old timers here with us, I've shown this to you before and I've been able to show you the some of the turbines and the uh, um, the drill points where they have actually drilled into the surface of the earth here down into the volcano to obtain steam here. I was sure I was going to find these here for you. And now I can't find them. That's really weird. <laughs> I can't. I can't find them. You can see the craters all over this area. It's huge. You can see the craters all over the Coza Volcanic Field. Earthquakes hitting all the time here literally all the time. Anyway, that's that. Okay? 
earthquakes hitting over here in the Kozo Volcanic Field. Okay? All over. All over. Still, this is part of Southern California here. So let's get out of here, and I want to show you the seismograms that I have to show you tonight. A bunch of them. Tons of them. <laughs> Tons of them. Again, this is one. This is just one of many guys. One of many of them. Okay, come on. Okay, that's Del Amo. Good old Del Amo here. Now, I want to show you also the town of Ellis. Okay? Look at this. Ellis had some earthquakes here too. Again, the top of this shows 5 a.m. The next one is 6 a.m. on the black line here. Then we move down here to 6.30. We move, move over to one, two, three, four, five minutes later. 5.35 this morning. Or 5.6, I mean, not 5, 6.35 this morning. All of a sudden we see 2.0 earthquakes. Then it becomes 3.0, 3.3 earthquakes here. Okay, this is Ellis, California. Southern California is moving, guys. Southern California is moving.